Welcome back guys. Today we're going to take a look at how my electricity system is now configured. In terms of actually getting power to and from the grid and through the inverter system and out to my houses. So let's stay tuned. But before we actually go through and talk about it in general, we need to do some digging. So let's take a look at that. So we basically need to get the big cable in here. And inside here we have two pipes going in. We have one for the thick wire that we are currently in use. But we have one smaller that is only holding some kind of ethernet wire. I'm not sure. I think this is the old one. So we can scrap that one and utilize that other pipe. And to do that we need to dig out a little bit more on the outside. So let's bring the excavator out and try to get hold of that one. Next one we need to deal with is this cable going in here. We have the old big one going on the outside here. I want the new one to go on the inside instead. So we need to remove one of the boards here and thread it on the inside and go into the other room. Let's take a look at the other room to see where this goes in and so see if we go to the left or the right of it. So you can see that up there is where the cable actually goes in. And I would like this to go on top of this roof instead and down to the panel so we are actually not going to go through the wall here this one is going to be removed so we have the panel going in here as you can see this is the old panel and this is the cable that is currently feeding the garage we're going to turn it on the way around so the new cable going in is going to feed this panel instead and we're going to do that on the top So basically we're going to have a cable going on the inside here and in there. We should be able to pull it in there up to the second floor and then get it going. So we need to do a little bit of digging here in the bottom to get the wire or the cable in where I want. So let's do that first and then we tie the cable in all the way around. Meanwhile we take a look at the back side where I got the new power inserted. The line actually comes up from the earth going up to the top and then down again to my box here. It then is transferred from that box down again in the soil under this part down through here and up to the house through this combiner box. This combiner box is the electric company's box and they take care of that part. It then goes into the house from that box through the wall. So let's take a look inside. So guys, here are the panels. As you can see, I have the main distribution panel down here. The main panel that do the switch in between the systems. And this is for the garage. So let's open them up and see how it looks inside. Here you can see in the background how the systems looks like when I have opened up the panels. 
So I'm quickly going to show you guys the different parts and in the end of this video we'll go through it on diagram as well so you get an insight on everything. So first of all this cabinet that we have here is powering my garage or the workshop that I am in right now. This one is the one from the standard and the only thing that we added here is the electricity meter that you can see on the side here. All those electricity meters that you see here are the STM630. They are Modbus compatible so it's easy for me to read the values and in next video or in a future video I will show you the cable going here that I'm currently installing on how it's done and how you easily can monitor that. In an earlier video you saw me do this with a Raspberry Pi but in this case I'm actually using the ESP8266 uh, it's easier to work with in the sense of the size and it doesn't take as much power. It's more coding, it's more electronics and such, but still it's simpler and dead. So we have all the fuses here. Uh, we have the main breaker here and the main protection for the earth leakage. This one is also powering my second panel that I have in the garage. Uh, I have two actually. As you can see down here we have a box as well. This is just a junction box. Uh, where we tie all the big leaves together in and the reason for that is because they do not fit in the other boxes so there's nothing to see inside here except of a bunch of cables so let's take a bigger look at the more important box itself this box here is a distribution box where we do all the fancy stuff so basically we have the incoming grid power here with the main breaker uh, the main protection unit is a 300 milliamp protection unit, so this one should not trigger first. The ones that are in each house will be the ones triggering first. We have this meter here that is measuring the grid power, so everything that goes in and out of the grid is measured through this unit here. Then we have two more units here, and they are measuring power going to my house and they're also measuring the power going back and forth or to my actual second house you could call it uh, the one with the boiler installment and the guest house we have the grid we have the main house, the guest house and we have the garage so we basically can monitor every part of my system from here up here we have two main three phase fuses those are 20 amp slow blow fuses and they are going to the inverter and back from the inverter and those are recommended to have and I, they are there so I can shut down the inverter itself and the solar next thing you can see is this thing up here this is the uh, switch that I use to switch between going through the solar system and actually taking directly from the grid we will take a look at this a little bit later on preferably I wanted this to be electronic uh, on the other hand the inverter itself can do this on its own. We are basically taking power in from this line here, feeding it to this switch here. This switch then determines if my outputs are going through the grid or through the inverter. The inverter is also fed from here through one of the breakers back and forth and in here and to this switch. That makes it possible for me to switch between the grid or the solar system itself. The system itself here is self-made, uh, the electrician have not installed any of such a kind for a normal person, he have only done it for companies before. And the reason for that is because it's rather new to have such a sophisticated system in Sweden or at least in my area. In most cases people tend to install the simple version with only a grid type system, meanwhile in my case I'm actually feeding everything from the batteries and from the solar. So let's go to the document and see and the actual connection, how it all hooks together. And those files will also be on my solar page and on the Second Life Storage Forum. Uh, links are of course down below. So let's head over to the next part. So let's take a look at the schematics. We will start in the left bottom corner and you will see that the power comes from the grid. The grid itself, the wire is rather thick and I think it is the 4G 16mm. It goes through my main breaker into the earth protection unit. And from here on I will be using 5G 10 and before that it was 4G 10. 
I'm doing this because the inverter that I'm using need five poles. It need earth and a neutral in actual separate lines and that's why I do it like that. I then distributed to the first STM630 that measures the power going in and out from the grid. I do measure this through RS485 Modbus protocols. And as you can see I'm using an ESP8266 through an TTL2485 opto isolated adapter. I will be shooting another video about that in the soon future. The meter itself then distributes the power to the first changeover switch. This is a 4 pole version to be able to actually switch the neutral as well. This is very important for my design in my system. The SDM630 also distributes the power to the first breaker that is then fed into my solar system. In this image I represent it by having only one inverter in the image but I actually have more in real life. It then goes back from that inverter to my change over switch again. The breakers there are 20 amp C rated breakers to be able to cope with the power itself. The change over switch is then in such a way set up that you can change between the grid and actual solar system. It goes through that one and down to my breaker box or my consolidation box and out to another 3 SDM630. Those are the ones that are monitoring the electricity going back and forth to the houses. And I have my garage and I have my guest house and I have my main house. This makes it possible for me to actually measure what goes anywhere in my household. So basically guys, this is it for this video. As you have seen, I have rearranged my incoming power or electricity in such a way that I actually can feed all my houses from the solar system only. I had to rearrange it in such a way because my pole or my incoming power was actually in the other side of my property. And this made it impossible for me to transfer the power. So by doing it this way we can now stay off grid or on solar power 10 out of 12 months all around the year. And this is really really cool. So guys, I want to thank you for watching and hopefully you learned something. If you have any questions feel free to set them down below in the comment section and if not don't forget to subscribe and I see you next time. Bye.